My name's Shauna Graves. I have four kids. And my 15-year-old Casey, my current favorite thing about him is that he still lets me hug him when I drop him off for school in the morning, which is especially nice because I'm often wearing my pajamas and I <laughs> jump out of the car. He gives me a big bear hug still, so yay for him. My daughters, oh gosh, Avery is in sixth grade. She's very creative, very sensitive. She loves dance, she loves poetry, she loves art. Her twin sister, Addison, is a spitfire, very strong-willed, a real go-getter, and she loves sports and is very competitive. And then my 18-year-old son, Cody, he was born with a rare genetic illness called mitochondrial disease. And his disease is progressive and it's fatal. He's been in and out of hospice. So, you know, he's beaten every prognosis. He was only supposed to be with us till he was three years old, and he is still with us at 18, so every day is a, a gift. But his disease is brutal, and he has violent seizures every day that are loud and scary, especially for my kids. He's nonverbal, he's G-tube fed, he's on oxygen, he's in a wheelchair. And our life at home, I often say we live on a banana peel <laughs> because it's chaotic, my kids really never know when I'm gonna be whisked away to the hospital with Cody. And we do our best, it's still, it's stressful. And they, you know, they've learned a lot. I, I think my favorite thing about my children is resiliency. They have really learned that we can do hard things. Uh, they've learned that the Lord is really in it with us and his fingerprints are everywhere. And even though their life is sort of chaotic and stressful at home. We have found a balance, and one of the crucial foundational pieces of our balance and our survival and our peace of mind is that my kids get to come here and be a part of this community. And so this school has just been a saving grace in so many ways for us. Life at home is is good. It can be a little stressful sometimes. So it's it's nice to be able to come to school and have sort of a uh, a foundation uh, where everything is sort of like normal and the same and constant. Like Casey said, um, it's nice to have like a foundation. And I know we've made so many good friends with so many like amazing people here that can like just they help support us and. Um, they're just, I know they can be there for us. We did some time in public school. And, you know, I, when you're sending your child to school six and a half, seven hours a day, sometimes 10 hours a day if they do sports, you realize how much time you're giving other people <laughs> to spend with your children and influence your children. And I just, I got really tired of debriefing with my kids what they had learned, what they see, that the tide of the culture in public schools was something I felt that almost every day I had to deconstruct and talk through. My daughter, Avery, she's very expressive about her faith and she would come home and literally say, I feel like I have to squelch my faith at, at school. I'm uncomfortable talking about it. And she would have tears in her eyes. And it broke my heart. And I began the pursuit of finding a place where their faith was celebrated, not squelched. And my kids rave about being here. Almost every day they hop in the car. How was your day? Fantastic. <laughs> I learned so much. I, Mom, there's a Bible study during recess for us. Us girls can meet together. And we talked about some stuff today, and after that, the teacher said we could come back after school and ask her follow-up questions, and I did. I asked her all kinds of questions. There's like a sixth grade girl Bible study. It, it's really helpful, like, because everyone might have their own like problems and stuff, and we just kind of come together as a group, and like, we share, we can share personal stuff, and like, help us go through like relationships that might be hard or difficult, relationships with friends,
family, and God. The teachers that help us, it's amazing to see them, that they're there for us. But it's just, it's really cool to see everyone, like, sharing their opinion and sharing their view and their experiences. Going to chapel every week was one of my favorite things to do because you're in this space where you're worshiping with your kids during their school day. It just makes you feel as a parent, you're not an outsider like I did feel in public schools. I always felt like there was a line in the sand at the front door. Here, I just feel that, that the door is flung wide open and that there is such an earnest desire from the leadership in the school to be transparent and to be an open book. And that breeds such security and such trust because we are turning our kids over to these people seven to 10 hours a day. And that trust is invaluable and it is rock solid. I love so much about this school, but I will say I do have a unique perspective because we have a unique circumstance with my 18 year old who you know, he, um, as I said, we, we tend to live on a banana peel and there's alarms going off from his medical machinery all day. There's nurses that help me in the house and it is chaotic. And my kids uh, have trauma around that all the time. They have grown up never knowing if they would lose their brother. He's been in hospice, he's survived hospice, but that was brutal. They've never heard their brother say a word. And my, my son has struggled in the past with, you know, I just want to throw a football with my older brother. It's a crazy thing having children who know they're going to outlive their sibling. And there's just a lot of grief and sadness in our house. There's also a lot of love and a lot of resiliency, but that grief and sadness is there. And I can't tell you what it's like to drive them to school in the morning. And I pull my car up and they hop out and I hug them and I linger in my car. And I watch all three of them walk into those double doors with the mighty eagle <laughs> overhead. And I think, oh, they are walking on sacred ground. They are entering a holy place where I know the Holy Spirit's at work and he's on the move. And they come from a chaotic home and trauma and stress into this space where they're ministered to. This isn't just a school, it's a family. These aren't just teachers, they're ministers. Mr. Bryant's in the crosswalk most mornings and he's just, you know, he's captain of the ship. And he ushers these kids in and there's this stability about his leadership. And from the leadership down, there is this sense that this is a true north, and it has become an anchor for our family in, in the midst of our great storm of life. And it's, it is a privilege to attend this school. <laughs>